flat pack and build it yourself. And thus a very small ATX case was born from Cooler Master. Just trying to figure out how to get the tempered glass panel back on. Welcome to Machines in One. No, it's not 0 0.03 liters, it's more like 33 liters, but it still feels like a bit of a big Lego project. And big thanks to my son for helping put together the Lego Cube 500 model. The case comes in separate pieces, yet you have to assemble it. There's some guidance, but there's still a level of unabashed freedom. The circles, they're functional and they're whimsical, they're playful and they're just plain fun. We're talking about the new Cube 500 from Cooler Master, of course. It's a new ATX case launching today that offers a new level of fun. So the main objective today, I'm going to show you the case, show you building it, and I'll share some thoughts on the cube and who this might be for. Before we begin, big thanks to Cooler Master for providing this case uh, for review. They also sent by their newly launched Atmos Cooler for the testing here and for the build here. They've been working with my channel for a long time and I'm very grateful to them for being willing to share their products for my testing, for my feedback and critique. That being said, I'm not compensated by them or any manufacturers for this and any of the other reviews on the channel. So you can expect a fair and well-researched review from the content on this channel. So the Q500's new flat pack, build it yourself ATX case that is designed to entertain a wide variety of users. Not only does it save on assembly and shipping costs, which hopefully are being passed on to the customer, but the bigger idea here is that if you're the type to want to build a PC, why not build the case your way yourself too? You've seen it with boutique cases like the Form T1 that we've reviewed extensively here. And it's also something that Inwin and Teenage Engineering have also done on a small form factor scale. But this is a big development, both in terms of the size of the case and also the size of the market it's designed to reach. You get the case in a rectangular box, and this is not a small box by any means, but this type of packaging means you're not taking up space in a shipping container to ship air, essentially. And this is much smaller than you would find for a comparably sized ATX case. Not that there are too many in this size bracket. There are a few main components here. There's the rear panel, which has the sole included case fan pre-mounted at the back, the motherboard side panel, the front structural panel, the bottom panel, and then you have two uh, outer panels. One has holes. It's intended to go behind the motherboard. The other one is tempered glass, and this will allow you to see into your build. The one I have here is the Macaron color version, so it comes with three sets of the cosmetic pastel colored outer panels that you can switch out. There is one dust filter uh, on, you just get a set of dust filters. Um, you can switch these out, mix and match to your heart's desire. Putting the case together is pretty simple, and I think the directions are fairly easy to follow. Plus, you only use one type of fastener, which is the 632 screw that they include a whole bunch of in case you lose track of uh, you know, some of them. Uh, the manual does recommend building the inside of the case at the same time. Uh, so you put your motherboard and other components at the, at the same time, you kind of build the case uh, together. But I did deviate from that recommendation because I wanted to show you what the empty case looks like first. So essentially you will mount the motherboard panel to the rear panel first. You can of course customize the standoffs at this point to match your motherboard's form factor, then attach the front structural panel, screw everything down, and then attach your bottom and top panels. You can mount the power supply hanger at any point during the process, since it is very easy to do. So I would just hang it at the same time you decide to mount the power supply in there. And both ATX or SFX you know, go into the hanger easily. So this is the core of the case. Everything else just snaps into this main chassis here. Compatibility, the uh, case can go up to an EATX motherboard if you use an SFX power supply. Uh, when I saw this at Computex earlier this year, the form factor led me to make a mental note that this was an MATX case, but it's really not. Uh, it's fairly, fairly generous in terms of the spacing, uh, much smaller than your average mid-tower, but it's really not short on compatibility. Behind the motherboard panel, you have a section for your cable management and for storage. You have three spots of two and a half inch SSDs on the cable management panel, where there are a few spots for three and a half HDDs. You know, you have one on the back, one on the bottom, one on the top panel. And if you decide to deploy the side mount radiator bracket, you get one there as well. As you might imagine for a case that looks like it's made out of Swiss cheese, uh, there's quite a lot of options for fans and radiators. 
At the back, a single 120 millimeter sickle float. It's, it's already pre-mounted. You can also do a 240 or 280 up top. Now take note that your max thickness for a top 280 is 53 millimeters. So if you're going with an off the shelf 280 AIO, just make sure you pay attention to how thick your unit is because that's right on the cusp of a lot of units. Uh, with the front mounted PSU, one could do a 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fan under it. Now if you migrate the power supply to the bottom, you can also do a front radiator there. This is a little less elegant, but I think it's certainly an option. And of course, you do have the bottom as well as a potential fan or radiator mounting point. The case has a few pump mounting locations for a custom loop on the side panel as well. If you want to air cool, you got plenty of room for that. You do have 172 millimeters of space here. So lots of big tower options to choose from if you need that and you want to go that route. And I think those would display quite nicely in this case as well. If you build the insides of the case as you build up the outside panels, I think you will have the easiest access this way. And this will certainly be the most streamlined way to build it all together. But you could also just build it like any other pre-assembled case after uh, completing the outside. Uh, for this build, I am using an MATX Gigabyte B650M Horus Elite board that's perfectly in the case, along with the Ryzen 5 7600X and the 4070 Founders Edition card. To power everything, I am using Cooler Master's SFX 1100 watt unit. Stock cables, they're still long enough to use in this case. And Cooler Master sent by their new ML240 Atmos, which I am reviewing separately. This one features pre-installed sickle float edge fans and features a customizable pump top cover. The user can make their own 3D printed design to show off some individuality there. So I think it's a good match for the very customizable cube case here. So I am top mounting the AIO, which is uh, where I think will be the cleanest location for most uh, builders. You could of course bottom mount it, which I think isn't as optimal from a performance standpoint, or you could side mount it. Uh, if you do go with a rad panel though, since they don't have a ventilated side panel included, you will have to use the case without the glass panel in order for that to work. I also added a front intake under the power supply, which will help streamline the airflow by feeding the graphics card some intake air and also pushing the card's exhaust towards the rear of the case and out through the rear exhaust. So once you do have everything laid out, definitely take advantage of the cable management area and tidy things up there. Then you can close the case up. The side panels, they just clip in securely. You can screw them in if you want. The top and front panels, they sit with a a rubber grommet into the mating circular hole on the case. Choose your color scheme here if you have the Macron version, which even includes an extra handle color. And I think these colors definitely jive well with the playful feel of the case here. The holes on the side panels are not just for ventilation though, but they serve a purpose. For one, I just snapped off the foot and you can, you know, mount it to the this panel, if you want, you can kind of turn it on its side or invert it. You know, th there's plenty of spaces uh, for these to go. You know, you know, go on two circles or the ovals. Another thing you can do is use it to hang accessories. And so, you know, if you have something you want to put on there, you know, just hang it up. It's kind of cool. You can hang your headset. You can route cables for your headsets, place a game controller. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. Right? So I don't test too many ATX cases, but the thermals here, they're absolutely fine after I gave it a, a, a run through. The 7600X at stock settings, it really just wants to run close to 95 degrees, but it really is not throttling here. And that's the main thing we are looking for. Ryzen 7000 is just very thermally dense as well. Fans are at a mild 1500 RPM here and probably could be a bit slower still, but it's a pretty quiet AIO here when installed in this case. For 1440p gaming test, the temps are excellent. GPU has fans locked at only 40% for consistency here. Not a huge combined thermal load for the case, but I think this is a configuration or a level of uh, build that many folks will choose. And my thought here is that the performance, you know, thermal performance is not the primary focus with this case. The main takeaway here for performance is that, you know, the ventilation is pretty good. If you need a 360 for your setup, it's not gonna be the right case for you anyhow, right? One thing I did notice, you have to be extra careful with the fan speeds because of the top and front add-on panels, because of the proximity to the fan without a gap. Those case panels do have the potential to amplify the noise.
There are a few other constructive points I wanted to mention here about the case. The mounting mechanism for the add-on panels are not hard to use, but I did notice on a few occasions the panel will just bulge back out or extend back out. There's no catch with these uh, mounts, so it can definitely do that if it's just somehow not having a good day. Now, it's a little odd to include the radiator panel when you're only including a glass display panel. Now, I understand you can use it without the glass panel, but I think the inclusion of another holy uh, side panel would be nice if just for someone that wants to be able to use the hangers and the accessories on that side instead. For the most part though, the case components are built correctly. Things lined up and screwed together without much fanfare. And I think they really made this easy to assemble because it only uses one uh, 632 screw. So you don't have to go searching and, and understanding what kind of hardware to use. And, and that's a big plus here. Pricing is gonna be $80 US for the black or white versions of this case. You can get the Macaron version for $100 all in. And personally, that's the one I'd go for because the color schemes you can come up with, I think that really epitomizes the casual and easygoing fun design language here. It's an entertaining case that has a lot of modular utility. You'll be really happy with this if you want a fun weekend project to build up for your purpose and your lifestyle. And you can add to it or change it on a whim. You can add useful accessories to it as needed. The compatibility is pretty good for an ATX case of this paltry volume, and it covers most of the user groups here with good performing and versatile enough cooling and fan options. Some of you are not gonna be thrilled to have to build a case. This case probably isn't for you. If you want a less playful, more serious looking case, the black and white versions are a little bit more serious, but they're still going to have a bunch of holes on them. So maybe this is also not for you. And certainly this isn't a maxed out cooling or radiator options type of ATX case. If you want a 360 in your build, you know, 280 is as good as it gets here. And you can have a few of them, but you know, also keep in mind that it's a smaller volume ATX case here. For what it is though, I like it a lot. It's almost like, Cooler Master started a new genre of case here. And I'd really like to see this flow down to small form factor, you know, cube 200 perhaps. So I think this type of design can get a lot of new folks into PC building that perhaps might not have been interested. And I think you're gonna see a lot of manufacturers follow suit on this mode of case delivery in the near future. But as far as easygoing and whimsical goes, this one, it's gonna take the cake or macaron. So hope you enjoyed the review and found it helpful. So please give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Component links are down below and thanks for watching.